live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2017. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for our wrap up of day one of theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Informatica World 2017. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal of the noise. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, theCUBE, and my co-host this week is Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE Media, also the general manager of wikibon.com. Go to wikibon.com and check out all the great research, some great stuff behind the paywall, subscription required, but also some free content there as well. And our special guest is Neil Raden, who's the new analyst on the Wikibon team. Welcome to the team. You're covering the value of data and analytics, industry veteran. Great to have you on the team. Thanks for joining us on our wrap up here. Thank you. Neil, welcome. Peter, um, look at this is, this is kind of a coming out party for Informatica. We've been following them for multiple years. Um, some of their top executives have been CUBE alumni for many, many years. I think Amit Wally's been going to be on his eighth year, eighth time on the CUBE. But look behind us, you see a new branding. Informatica has a new CMO and she's got swagger and she's got brand impact. Informatica is now going to start bragging about their products. Yeah. Um, although I have some critical analysis of Informatica, we'll get to in a second, but I've always said they've brought in a team of folks during the going private that have product chops. And they've had an install base and their goal has been from the beginning, let's go private, close the curtain, and get stuff reorganized and really work on the product. They had an install base and can they pivot? That was my question three years ago. Every year they keep on coming out with not a land grab, but an incremental, they're moving the ball down the field, to use your football analogy, first and 10, do it again, but starting to get into that horizontally scalable cloud model in with good cloud deals, looking poised, in my opinion, for being a data layer, potentially for making that data fabric on. So, so to me, I think that's the big story here so far is some good news around the brand, product increases, you've got AI, augmented intelligence with Claire, uh, some interesting dynamics which means the interface to data is changing. Not only the underlying value of the data, which we want to get into, but Informatica is trying to up-level the interface. Your thoughts? Well, so I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right, John. I think we've seen three things here. First off, Informatica has always had a pretty decent product kit, uh, well embedded within some really first-rate customers. Number two, they've been talking about the need to accommodate some of the new trends around cloud and how they're going to move in that direction. They've been talking about it this is the first year we've really seen it. And in number three, they, even when Informatica talks, people have historically not listened as much. Sally Jenkins, the new CMO, has gotten an enormous amount of work done in a very, very short period of time. And this is a bang, so, and, it, and it's manifesting itself in that people are buzzing about it. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 even if, Informatica has a lot to do to really be that enterprise, cloud, data management leader, a lot left to do, yeah. but it all starts by presenting themselves in a coherent way, and that's something that we've seen. And the for value the first proposition time. has changed significantly. I was talking about the Amazon stock price, and you know, since 2010, it's just been a skyrocket growth for Amazon across the board. Yeah, they got the retail, but AWS certainly has been powering it. Having a good brand behind you is going to you know, really energize the channel, ISV, software developers, and like I always joked about the old days when I used to work at Hewlett Packard, the joke was. You know, they used to call you know, cold dead fish versus sushi. HP would be so accurate, so engineering oriented, they would be so <laughs> accurate around the products. They didn't really have a lot of marketing. And the joke was, if they had sushi, they'd call it cold dead fish because that's what it is. Sushi sounds better. But again, back to marketing. They need to bring the brand out and put a message around the shift to value. Well, think about how important a, it's going to be to a company that increasingly acknowledges, or acknowledges it increasingly, their customers are going to find them in something like the Amazon marketplace, or in Google, or in some other cloud environment. It means that they have to bias the customer to choose Informatica versus a range of tools that may not be as good, but some of them are going to be open source. To get people to bias at that moment, you got to get your brand out there. You have to get your identity out there. And Informatica was not going to be a success when a customer's making that decision as they're looking at that Amazon marketplace just by word of mouth. They have to get their name out there. So this is, this is big. The products are still good and, making, and improving. Getting to the cloud is a big deal. They're you know, delivering on their promises and now having a marketing platform that allows them to scream a little bit louder from the rafters about who they are and what they want to be. 
a lot of it's coming together. And day two, we're going to have all the top execs on. They were in an offsite down the street right here at the Intercontinental uh, in San Francisco with the executive uh, customer day. But we had SVP on for cloud business. We had the board member, Jerry Held, who's five decades in the business. I mean, he yep. essentially laid it out. Hybrid cloud's here to stay, and it's not going to be an overnight success. It's going to be a transition, and that favors the legacy vendors who are sharpening their saw and getting their products in line. Of course, we had the Chicago Cubs on, and we took the ring, almost put it in my pocket in very Putin-esque like <laughs> style. We all know Robert Kraft lost his uh, Super Bowl ring to, <laughs> to the biggest criminal in the world, oh. um, Putin. Um, but kind of a fun <laughs> there. But, but you know, the baseball <laughs> team highlights the customer journeys, they have customers that love them and stay with them because of the install oh, base. No, absolutely, so. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and inf Informatica is deeply embedded, and has been, Neil, has been on the vanguard That's of, right. I mean, they, look, they got a lot of work to do, but they've been mm -hmm. on the vanguard of, of, of tying together the idea of data, data as an asset, tooling, so you can get more value out That's of right. your data through analytics. That's right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I mean, I, I brought Informatica in to one of my clients the first time in 1996. <laughs> uh, they were pretty much a brand new company. About a year after they started. Yeah. And uh, what motivated me to think about Informatica as opposed to any other way we were trying to get data into a data warehouse um, was that they understood metadata. They were the only company that had an active metadata repository. Um, so this is their heritage. Uh, I know that, that Informatica claims they have, I don't know, 10,000 customers. Uh, I think a significant number of those are not going to be interested in this whole thing. They don't have the budget for it, they don't have the, the time or the staff or anything. Um, but they've got the elite. When you look at the companies that are clients of Informatica, those are the people that would be, be interested in, and, and spend time and money on this sort of thing. Yeah. Well, let me get you guys' perspective as analysts because let's turn this into the analysis of what's happening here with Informatica and mm -hmm. uh, compare that to what's happening in the industry. SAP Sapphire is happening right now in Orlando. We've got CUBE coverage in our studio in Palo Alto, but Oracle, SAP, these are database guys. They have systems of record. IBM, Amazon's now a new player in that. Mm -hmm. They have to balance the install-based systems of record of their data. Now granted, old techniques, four walls, data warehouse, whatever you want to call it, it was an old way. Now the new way is to empower developers to actually build and use that data. So the question is, <laughs> how do they get their product from old to new and modernize quickly and highlight data as value? Because this is the thing that you guys are both researching heavily, is that data now is going to start to be a valuation discussion. Mm -hmm. Are we getting the data through the pipes, if you will, into the hands of the developers, into the apps, into the decision-making process, in the value chains that are being reconstructed, this is a top conversation that not a lot of people are laying out there with, with best practices. Your thoughts? Well, I think the first thing, and I'll start, Neil, I think the first thing is that that's probably my biggest ding on Informatica here, is that they I need that. to be more of a beacon about what is the new data management. Right. Uh, it's more than just the combination of tools, it's more than just getting data out of applications and getting data out of databases and freeing it up so that it can be applied. Right. They're, the, the notion of data management is evolving rapidly and businesses are trying to, as they try to use data as an asset, is going to require some significant changes to how we think about Do you think they can data. put that stake in the ground right now and own that right now? I think, I think no. somebody has to. I think they need to take a crack at it. Neil, I what's think, your thoughts? I, I, think they're, I think they're weak on the value. I think they're weak on you know, what happens. I always uh, have this idea that you see their, their layer cakes and the things that go from left to right, but on, on the right-hand side of the diagram, there are no people, right? What happens when you implement all this? How do people use this, okay? And, 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 and that's true of everybody in this industry, not yeah. just Informatica, so that's one weakness. Uh, last year when I was here, um, I thought that they had a real weakness in governance but with the Daiku Axon uh, uh, acquisitions, I think they made a giant step towards that. They've got, a lot of, they've got a lot of the piece parts and they're putting them together, but I don't think they're addressing what happens next. I call it the Jordan River problem. You know, we wandered around for 40 years, we got to the Jordan <laughs> River, we can't get across the damn river, right? And, uh, and, and I think Is it a river or a lake or an ocean? I mean, it's a data <laughs> river, it's something happening. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lake, river. it's something. I think that, and I think that's where they are because it's, it's a whole different discipline. But is that, is that an in, on Informatica? I mean, and they're now yes. a smaller company or is that an industry issue? No, it's an industry issue, but yes. companies like Informatica, if they really want to be a leader, yeah. as he flings his glasses around. That's how passionate I am about this. If they want to be <laughs> a leader or the leader, yeah. they have to put a stake in the ground, don't they? I believe so. Okay, so what yeah. about positives? Neil, what's your thoughts on how are they well positioned in your mind? 
Well, you know, putting together all these different pieces so that they operate together is, is phenomenal. Uh, moving to, I, I still don't understand how enterprise uh, software companies move to a subscription model smoothly. That's got to be a real headache. Yeah. But they're moving to that, they've adopted the cloud. Uh, they still have the data integration, I mean, that's their keystone, it works beautifully, it, it gets better every yeah. year, and that's what attracts people to them. So, I think these are all good things. And, and the, the good news is they're private, so they can do that subscription, kind of right. hide the ball a little bit, and then come out. Yeah. But they're not doing bad, I mean, they, they no, have a spring to their fine. step. Yeah. You know, here's, here, I, would, I, I think Neil's absolutely right, here's what I would add to it. They're executing. Mm -hmm. They have demonstrated over the past couple of years, certainly that we've been here and listening to them, they've made promises, they've delivered. They've made new promises, they've delivered. Some of these promises have been complex, some of them have been extremely hard, they've still delivered. That is a okay. real important piece of, one, of the story because mm -hmm. this notion of yeah. data management is changing. Okay. You customers know, are going to want to work with companies that have competent management that deliver on the promises that they're making, and Informatica is proving that they've, they're up to that problem. Look, I you think, know, I know, think, another I thing, think, John, they have brilliant people. Everybody I've met here from Informatica is really special. You know, I mean, you know, maybe they, they kept the clunkers in the closet somewhere, <laughs> but they've got, they've got brilliant, motivated people working here. they got a ton of experience. We're passionate about this stuff. And they got yeah. a lot of experience, too, and they brought yeah. in some new guns. Yeah. The product side, we're going to emit, uh, yeah. emit uh, as a fantastic product executive, and obviously has that background. But I got to want to shift now to the end user now. They're now living in a world of massive business transformation. Yeah, digital transformation, rah rah, it's kind of overhyped. But the, hey. what, what that translates to is business transformation. Mm -hmm. That's the conversation on all CSOs. Business transformation around data. Around yeah. data. So yeah. I want to get your thoughts now, vis-a-vis -vis that, the customer's perspective. I'm looking at Informatica, how do I feel about them? Well, look, you know, before I march off this mortal coil, this is what I want to happen. <laughs> I want to say, look, computer, I want to put together a new pricing model, all right? Um, here are a couple of variables I'm interested in. Uh, one of my competitors just issued a uh, press release with some new pricing data. Uh, go get that and come back to me with some data. Recommend some data I need to build a Give model some to options. do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's clear. I mean, that's something they're talking about, losing some automation and machine learning. Mm -hmm. Peter, you think that's the nirvana? That is a, a nice position to be. It's like, hey Alexa, play some music. And you know, they play a genre yeah. for you, right? right. So, well, I mean, right. Hey, give me some data, so <laughs> let's, data. let's think yeah. about the elements yeah. that are going to yeah. be important as we think about this new notion of data management. And again, I don't think Informatica is too far from this. A new notion of data management suggests, number one, that if your business is going to use data differently, you have to introduce some notion of some concept of design. How do I design business around data and how do I design data around business needs? Uh, yeah. Part of that problem is going to be being able to go out and, and in, capture inventory catalog metadata. No question about it. Yeah. You're going to yeah. need the next generation of data management is going to be very metadata focused. Secondly, you need a lot of the tooling that's capable of doing the transformation and creating that's derivative right. value out of data that's something else that they have. The third one, and this is a really, really important piece, and we talked about it, for example, with Ryder and a couple of other people. Data has to move, but it has to move not just based on point-to-point -point interfaces that are programmed and built, but based on patterns of utilization and in a way that the system yeah. recognizes that. And that is going to be crucially important. The whole notion of data That's moving right. in response to what the business needs and not what the people Recognize well, and okay, do. Okay, so that, that reminds me, I, I was speaking to someone who uh, is part of their uh, security stuff, right? And um, I said, well, have you considered how data security could benefit analysts as opposed to keeping the company out of trouble? Business analysts. Yeah, just couldn't answer the question, right? Yeah. Um, because I said, so, so tell me how this works. And she said, well, you know, if someone has a pattern of how they work with data, mm -hmm. if suddenly they work out of that pattern, it's going to send off a, a signal. I said, well, what's the signal? Are they going to get a skull and crossbones? They go, you can't well, have it sends this data. Policy right. flag, okay, hey, <laughs> yeah. you out of your swim lane. That's like, get back into your jail cell. I, said, I mean, it's restrictive. But think about Absolutely it this way. Restrictive. Don't you want your analysts to be thinking out of the box? Which means on a regular basis they would be requesting data they don't normally Here's want. Here's what I like right? about Informatica from my perspective. Yeah. Again, you guys are in, in under the hood in a deeper way, but from my perspective is that the, what they're doing with the horizontally scalable is interesting. And, and this is interesting on the metadata side, you mentioned that, with Span, Google Spanner now available, mm -hmm. they're in Amazon. If they can somehow create that addressable data sets that could be horizontally scalable and freely available, I think that is a winning strategy because most of the vendors in the data take a siloed stack approach. Okay, here's our stack, right. you own it. That's so right. I, think, I think they're on this genius play of, okay, if we can get this horizontal layer, 
that is now the lock spec because now I'm, in, I'm agnostic on cloud. So to me, I think that directionally is correct. Where that is when the rubber meets the road yep. is a whole other story. And it's, and, and it's so pretty your exciting. thoughts on that? It's very exciting. I hope they pull it off. Yeah, I, I think works. it's very exciting. So if you think about it, how John, do they pull it off? Let, let's well, yeah. there's, so there's let, let's, let's without being shot by the other incumbent with bigger think, guns. Let's think about a couple yeah. of different ways of thinking about this. Right. Okay. On the one hand, you have uh, new ways of thinking about how data is going to be spread in a multi or in a hybrid cloud world. Mm -hmm. So so that's happening. Uh, secondly, we're thinking about data control and a data control plane above, above that. And there are a bunch of companies that are talking about how you bring control across all these different multi-cloud instances. And on top of that, now we're talking about some of the analytics and how data gets used from a metadata standpoint. So this is extremely relevant to where the industry is going to be in yeah. five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. somebody, is going to, somebody is going to get there and it's best to look for the folks who are you know, yeah. skating to that puck. And Informatica seems to be skating to All that right, puck. I want to ask you guys a question. I want you to tell me if I'm smoking crack or not um, when I say this. The whole goal of getting data from any database at any given time in less than 100 milliseconds, no matter where it came from, when it came from, IOT included, all this stuff's coming in. I got an, I'm an app developer, I want data programmability. Meaning I have an app and I'm doing some some cognitive, cognition thing, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, Neil, you bought something at Nordstrom's from three years ago <laughs> in, some, in some database. Yeah. You know, I mean, just think about the logic on that query, but that data could be cross-connected with other relevant data, right. your Twitter stuff, or whatever you're doing, right. and pulled together to provide some insight for you. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds like I'm smoking crack to pull that off. Is that possible? Can it be done in the kind of low latency mechanism? It, you know, it, it, it can be done, but I don't think we know enough about the data. Uh, there are four types of metadata still leave out deep semantic information. Um, I'm hoping they're going to work on that. I mean, I was in here 10 years ago pitching ontologies and they threw me out. <laughs> so, uh, but I think that the four types of Hard metadata- Hard ontologies. Yeah, I, I think the four types of metadata are great, but they're still generating it mechanically from, uh, from data sets, as opposed to some knowledge about what the data really means. And to do what you want to do, I think you need some kind of semantic Metadata. I agree with that, and you also need semantic information about the underlying network as well. So there's sure. a, so a lot more network, work to do to make that happen. A lot yeah. more work. All right. More work so final that. question. And it's probably not going to be 100 milliseconds. 140, 150, yeah. maybe 200. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, anything. Just getting the data would be a win. Right. Okay. Final question. This is kind of more on the stuff we talked about in leading in the intro. The work you guys are doing. Yeah. The valuation concept of data, I and mean, when I say valuation, I could mean financial valuation, how value of a firm is, or what is our CFO, con where's our assets, where's our data assets? So there's a combination of data hygiene and also heart surgery, right? If it's the heartbeat of your organization, sure, yeah. who the hell's the surgeon, who's the doctor, when do you do CPR, who does the hygiene? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the, who does the amputation? I mean, who does, I mean, this is like, I mean, this is a data nightmare of a reconstruction of a company. Yeah. The nature, nature of the firm yeah. is completely upside down when you start thinking data. Just your reaction to that concept. Well, they have a, they have a very lo loyal customer base. So I, I think that they can, they can get out with this before it's completely cooked and have some success. Maybe I'm being optimistic, I don't know. But Peter, I your think, thoughts, valuation yeah. of data. I think oh. that there is, uh, that uh, a way of thinking about it is not to value data in a narrow sense, but think about data, what we're calling data dynamics. And the idea that yeah. data's value is founded in its use. It's not something that has value when it's just sitting there and yeah. not being used. It's, but, yeah, it's it, like that old saw, I don't know how to define pornography, but I know it when I see it. Yeah. Right, I think that. And data yeah. and and That was the Supreme Court justice, I didn't yeah. say yeah. that. Exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, but, it's like teenage sex, but, you know, everyone yeah. thinks they're having it. But they're increasingly, not. this goes uh. back to that notion of data management. It's how am I going to use data, how am I going to get value out of data through its use, and that suggests a whole different set of principles and practices that are quite different from how we normally value assets. Okay, tomorrow we got the top execs coming in, we got the CMO, mm -hmm. we got the CEO, we got the v C EVP of products, what should we be asking them tomorrow? What should I be uh, opening up the kimono on and, and, and digging into them on? Um, I'd ask them what um, you know, their roadmap is in terms of, of getting this implemented in their best customers. Not the, not the software development roadmap. Yeah. Uh, how, so deployment. tell us, tell this the is, yeah, deployment. Roadmap. how this is going to roll out for you. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, you'll I'd certainly like be here up until two o'clock, we'll be there. What are you going to be looking at? I'd, I'd look for two things. One is I would continuously push on the execution. 
Yeah. Uh, are they are they are they really executing as reliably as we think they are? Because yeah. they're making some big promises this yeah. year too. Yeah. Um, the second one I'd look at is again that that beacon, that touchstone. What is this new data management? Yeah. What are you really going to yeah. be leading? That's yeah, true. and I'm still blown away by the conferences I go to. And everyone's like, well, there's a new way, new modern era is evolving, it's transformation, but yet we're number one in five magic quadrants. Wait a minute, how can you get magic quadrants as the scoreboard if you go into a new definition? So again, our metric KPI on that is mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. Right. What is your customer traction? Yeah. Show me the proof points. Which is I don't care point. what exactly. magic quadrant you're in. That's an old metric. Yeah. That's yeah. siloed based, that's not reality based, in my opinion. So we won't drill them on customers. To me, that's the scoreboard. Okay, good. this is theCUBE, breaking down day one wrap up here at Informatica World. This is theCUBE coverage, I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris and special guest, new Wikibon ass Neil Raden, covering the value of data and analytics. See you tomorrow, stay with us for more continuing coverage tomorrow for full day, be right back. <laughs>